Now, there's certainly been plenty to talk about for the Arab world's journalists. And last week, Dubai gave reporters a place to share their experiences at the 13th Arab Media Forum. Well, the forum gathered 2,000 media personalities to the Emirates under its theme of the future of media starts today. Nadi Bilbasi Charters is one of the leading voices from this part of the world. The Al Arabiya journalist has been bringing the Arab world news from Washington, D.C. for over a decade now. Well, I had the chance to meet up with her at this year's forum, and I began by asking her how credible she thought the Arab press is currently being perceived. Well, the Arab Spring, I think, has posed a great cha a challenge to everybody, let alone the media, which is supposed to be the fourth state, supposed to give the viewers the right information. And this information should be objective, free of bias, and as much as they can, closer to the truth. So I think at the moment, all of the Arab media, especially the uh, broadcast media, uh, faces a real test in terms of credibility. And unfortunately, we see polarization in terms of where you stand at the, for the time being. If you support this party or that party, and that reflects very much on the screen. And it's a struggle for the people who work in the newsroom and also a struggle for people who work in the field. I mean, reporters like myself. And of course, I mean, organizations like Al Jazeera were criticized during the Arab Spring when instead of showing the mass protests in Egypt, they were showing soccer training updates. And of course, I think their credibility really suffered. How did it affect the industry as a whole? It does affect the industry because they always say, as you know in English, you are as good as your last story. So when you actually have a biased coverage or you decide to cover a story in a certain way in terms of having the uh, analyst that suits your editorial line or if you give red lines to the reporters on certain things you should issue or not issue, self-censorship, etc., uh, using certain terminology, it does affect the credibility. And in the end, if I was the manager, if I was in charge of the news station, I want audience, not just audience who agree with me, but the people who are actually in the middle. So these people in the middle, you're going to lose by not being objective. And this is my point from the beginning, that if you really want to serve your industry very well, your professionalism and your country, you have to be first and foremost objective. How have you managed to stay objective? You've been a journalist for a couple of decades now. You've worked all around the world. How have you managed to make sure that you've stayed in the middle? Um, it's always a struggle, there's no doubt about it. Uh, maybe when I worked in Africa it was easier because it was uh, remote from the Arab world, so it does not really interfere directly. In general, I think we do, I don't really suffer directly from somebody on top of my head telling me you should write this or you shouldn't write that. Um, but we know the red lines, and I think the most uh, insidious censorship is self-censorship, because you work for a company and you cannot criticize this or that. But the, the bottom line, I think it has to be constructive criticism. In the end, we wanted to go, we have a vision to where the media should be. We, we're making a small crack in the glass ceiling, we're not there yet. It's going to be a long time before we go because the media goes with the society. And we are taking a very modest step towards democracy. But there is a change and the change is coming. And don't forget we have also challenge from the social media. If we don't put things on, on TV, People are going to read it somewhere else. They're going to see it on Twitter, they're going to see it on YouTube, they're going to read it on Facebook, etc. Especially with a young population. And the Arab world is a very young population, almost like 60% under the age of 30. So these people are going to hold you accountable to what you say. So I'm still optimistic, despite everything, that we're going to move towards the right direction. How has that changed the way that you've reported news now? Mentioning obviously the social media, I guess the increasing transparency we're seeing and the availability of news. I actually cannot keep up with the things that I read on Twitter. And I, I find it's a, it's a good second source of information. But I read the news story, I have to go and double check it. I have to call my contact, I have to, to make sure that what I read is actually accurate and then I put it on TV. And I also stay away from opinion. Is this enough people on television, especially Arab television, who are analysts and they can give you opinion? My job is to give you facts, as much as I can, to stick to the facts. Of course, nowadays you're based over in the US. Do you think credibility uh, has changed between US journalists and Arab journalists, or would you say they're about the same? They're not the same. Look, I mean, democracies or Western democracies are different, uh, with, uh, uh, different from third world countries. The, everything, the conditions, the understanding, the rules, the, the law, everything is different. But in general, I think, um, the New York Times did a survey a few years back, and they found that actually even Western journalists are getting lazier in checking their, double checking their sources. Uh, they just write even information that they, they, they made up. So even the Western journalists, even with the print uh, journalism, which I hold 
to higher standard than TV. But in America, also there is polarization. There is news uh, channels that primarily serve the right, led by Fox News, and you have one to the left, like MSNBC, for example, and the one in the middle, they struggle. So people say, maybe this is what they want. So give the audience what they want. And I say, yes, it's important to listen to what people say in the street or the viewers, what they want. But also, you have a message to elevate the debate, bring it to a different, to a higher level than what's a common person.